it's dark in here. I don't have any electricity. So we have uh, oil lamps and uh, candles. So this is the reception. Yeah. It really is a hotel. Yeah, we don't have any uh, word for this kind of, of uh, place. It's more like a nature experience, I think. There's a sauna. Sauna. Yeah. Number nine and ten, guys. With this part of Sweden, we have quite big pines and spruce everywhere, and uh, everything is very green. It's a little bit like a story for kids. Eight. With trolls, and I think it's very nice. This is ours. Let's go. There's your house. There's my house. Try. Put it on top of the candles. Don't touch it with the candles, though. Uh, Alright, let's go to the next one, but I want to put my shoes on again. Okay. Does it Mom, seem like a hotel room to you? Yeah. It's like is really this ours? Yeah, that's ours. Yours is mine. This is, uh... The house, the house. <laughs> we have sleeping sacks. And for furs. It's cozy, warm. <laughs> Can you believe that by just having a lot of probably thermal mass and having some candles on for a while, you, you sort of feel it? Ooh, it's warm. It's getting warm. I'm getting these off. I think these are charcoal huts because there used to be charcoal industry out here. And this is what they slept in. Let's start a little fire. So this is where the charcoal workers would live. Yes, like the the traditional charcoal huts. The reason why they stayed in the huts was to always be close to the coal kiln when it was coaling. Look over here, now it's just uh, some wood pieces and, and very black on, on, the, on the ground. We, so this, nowadays it's barbecue coal. But for many hundred years they wanted the coal for the iron industry, to make very hot fire in big ovens to produce iron. So uh, they did the coal in the forest because it was much easier to do it where they find the wood. So they did it in the forest. They built this kind of hut to sleep in during the time. This Saturday we made, this was finished. So we, that's why it's, it's nothing left here. What did you do? So, so you just burnt wood here? Yeah, actually. And, and this is how it looks like. We do like a floor first, mm -hmm. and then we, we rise up timber in a big circle. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, we cover it with old branches from the spruce and then old coal to keep the air away. So then it should burn for uh, this size for about one week. And if it burns too much, then they have to go out quickly and, and try to like make it more compact on the outside. And that's why they slept in this charcoal hut very close to the coal kiln to see if it's burned too much, they had to be out very quick and take the fire out. So it's just burned very slowly. Then. When the trees were finished in the area, they moved to the next place and brought everything with them and built up the new hut and so on. So it was, yeah, they, they were hiking around in, in, the, in the forest. It was very heavy and dirty work, but also I think it was a bit uh, nice in some way also just to be out and live like this. It was a special way to live. And, uh, so it was, a, it was a very itinerant kind of way of following yeah. the forest. It was, it was not a permanent... No, no, they moved to the place where the trees were and so on. So they slept inside here, maybe also they had a small fireplace to cook food and to, to dry their clothes and so on. But as you see, it's very small and primitive. It's just mud and natural wood. The outside is very simple. 
It's very basic outside. This is all actually old cold. We call it stib. If you pack it really good, it's also keep away the water. This is also, of course, just mud and soil, and but they could find some moss. How much of that do you put on there? How much grows? Do you mean this? Yeah. It grows directly. You take it from around in the forest. Like I, I have restored it now, at least two huts since I took over for every year. And then I just dig everything away and put up more new fresh mud and soil. And then after two weeks, it starts to grow again. So, so if you look on that one over here, we restored that one in the beginning of the summer. So it grows so fast. And it looks very nice. It's a little bit like uh, the Hobbits, <laughs> Lord of the Rings, I think. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. It looks very cozy, and, and you have like mud and soil outside, and also moss tree on top of that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's alive, maybe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely, it grows. So sooner or later, we maybe have to move it. Some huts, you have wild strawberries on the hut, so it's just to go and pick. I see more. Here, You find more? Yes, oh, yes. that's a uh, raspberry. It's red. There, you can pick that one also. You don't have to bring food when you come here. You have it on the on the roof. <laughs> I won't do that again. Oh, okay. What is that going to be your dinner? Okay, so these are the instructions. Fresh water. There's a natural spring. The toilet, and there's an outdoor toilet located near the stream. Follow the signs to DOS. Feel free to pee in the forest, but not on the blueberries. <laughs> firewood. Chop your own firewood. Use the axe carefully and at your own risk. Do you know how to chop wood? Yes. Really? Seriously? Huh? Seriously? I don't want you to hurt yourself. Oh, you know, it does say something here. Keep legs wide apart. Check behind you. Aim with straight arms. Okay. Swing axe straight above head. Use controlled technique and raw power. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay, so I, I guess I have to. Then I have to deliver, huh? Mm -hmm. Straight above head. Okay. Okay, that's better. Is that what they do? Do you think that I earned uh, like a twenty percent of my meal? Okay. So I always show guests how to chop wood. Many people they it's I don't know if it's natural, but they think it's nice to standing on the side and then chop. But if you miss, then you can have it in the leg. So it's like playing golf. Shoulder bread, bend knees. So you are stable and then you put the axe where you want to hit and then just straight up and down and try to go all the way through and hit this one. Fire lesson number one. The smaller and the more wood you have, the easier it's to start the fire. Some of the guests doesn't know at all how to chop wood, but think it's really, really fun. So they used to stand here and chop wood. They ask if it's okay to stand here and chop wood sometimes. <laughs> I worked like a store manager before and before the military. I went from outside work to inside and I didn't feel so good. And now I'm always outside and I feel so good. Our concept is that you, it's back to basic and to chop your own wood, to start your own fire, to cook your own food. So we use fire steel and in this case I will use the bark from the birch. And the thing I want to do now is this small stuff on the outside I want to rug it up because you want very small, thin, nice parts to, to make the sparkles from the fire steel to start the fire. So if you start the fire, try to start it directly on mm -hmm. this one without this, it doesn't work. Yeah. So you have to have some nice fluffy stuff to, okay. to make the sparkles. No, no. 
Wow. Wow. So then we used more bark. And some. That's cool. Yeah. Without matches. <laughs> Robin. It's quite easy when you know how to do it with the fire still. Ah. Put on these ones. <laughs> the good thing with the fire steel is that even if it's wet, you can dry it off and you can get the sparkles. So it's a, it's a good lifesaver if you are in the forest. This was built, they wanted to build it so it looks like a coal kiln, I, the idea was, but then uh, it was hard to get the, the grass to, to stay on the outside, so I decided to, to make it with wood also on the outside. You get quite used to make fire after a while. <laughs> If it's raining outside, people can go inside here to cook food and, and just to get together. So it's, it's a nice place to have. Is this brother structure, does it come from any, any tradition? Or is yeah, maybe a little bit, because we have like a special up north, we have, a, we call it kota, trä kota, it's like a, a tent in wood. It's a little bit, if you see it inside, it's a little bit like that, constructions. I think people are getting more and more interesting about the old history and want to come out here and test how it was. This is the way they transported the coal from the forest with horse and one man sitting in the front. I think it's like 100 years old or something. But many people's fathers and mothers were a part of this in the end. They stopped in 1959 in this area, so it's not so far ago. So many people, they come here because their fathers or mothers were out in the for forest and they worked in the forest industry in somewhere. So I think uh, you want to get back to, to your roots maybe and, and uh, test it and see how it was. The first feeling I had when I came was that it was quite warm yeah, yeah. inside and there were only candles here. Yeah. The only thing that make it warm yeah. is the soil on the on the outside. It will be like thermal mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also we use it in the winter time and then you get also a layer of snow on top of it. So even if it's very cold, I think uh, it was minus 25 degrees below zero. It was a family here. And outside it's very cold, but inside they made fire and then the snow isolates and so on. So it was around 17, 18 degrees inside and that, that's like home. And actually in the summer, if it's very hot outside, it's very cool and nice when you come inside. This is the most exotic place in the Eco Lodge. <laughs> now it's quite... On the countryside in Sweden, especially some time ago, uh, this was the way to have the toilets. Yeah. Yeah, for, for pee in the front and uh -huh. then poo in the back. Because we cannot uh, mix it when we compost it, then it's just a mess. We have to separate it. Yeah. You flush with some soil. It's uh, a mix with the bark from the tree and you use this one to we compost it after. So after some years when our canteens are full on the backside, we have a new soil that we can put out in the forest. With, with uh, water, we take water from the stream, like here. And then you just like, yeah, clean, clean your hands like that and dry it off. And, and then you just take this one and put it out in the, in the woods. Very simple, but it works. So this is a very primitive toilet, but it's really working. It smells good. Yeah, and you know the guy on the photo? It's the, the king, the Swedish king. <laughs> it's a Swedish tradition that he should be on a photo of this kind of, no. of toilet. But <laughs> to sit like a highness, I don't know. <laughs> so you have someone to talk with when you're here. No. <laughs> so now the washing machine in the stream. 
So you have a nice soap here that you can use directly in the stream. So it's biodegradable? Yeah, yeah. It's very, very simple and primitive, but it works. I like this place. It's, I like the sound, like water that flows. And that's why it's so popular to have it in the gardens and so on, like small fontans. And... But you have it for free in nature. <laughs> Doesn't cost anything extra. <laughs> I keep trying, maybe down below. No number. Oh. I think it's a mushroom. The reason why I took over here was to teach people how to be safe in the forest. I think you call this Mars tea in English. Smell it and have a guess what you can use it for. Popcorn or tea? Yeah, yeah, tea. The main purpose if you are in the forest, go for a hike and you forget your mosquito repellent. You can like squeeze this one to your body. Oh, give it to me then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use here uh, my knowledge from the Swedish military. So I have uh, survival courses. So all this, I don't know if we filmed it, but all these ones are blueberries to eat. There's more. Blueberry. Are you collecting for later? Yeah, to eat. Mmm, they're all yummy. Yummy? Mmm. Are you finding your own food? You don't have to go to the store? My own big berries. I think people want to experience Sweden and the nature when they come here. <gasps> I think that's the sauna. Look way down there. Out by the lake, do you see that out there? I think uh, it's a culture in Sweden to, to be out and to hike and maybe to go out and, and use the lake for fishing and just to be out in the nature is also very, very normal. Over there, yeah. maybe you can't see it, but yeah. on the right side we have the sauna. I had a group from Hong Kong some years ago. We did a lot of activities and so on, but one thing that they remember after and that I heard was very, they th thought it was very nice. Because I was thinking, if you are from Hong Kong, it's probably noise. I've never been there, but uh, I, I was looking up and it's a lot of noise, like 24 hours around. I just walked away with them in this area and put them in the blueberry bushes and uh, told them to be quiet for six minutes. Uh, and just and that they will hear stuff that they know that they normally doesn't hear. So and I spread them out so they were 10 meters between each other. In the beginning, you saw that they were actually a little bit afraid of that it should be quiet. It is quiet here, if you don't say anything. You don't hear any cars, you don't hear any, anything. Just the, the wind, the birds, and yeah, and a lot of stuff from nature. They really enjoy that moment, just completely quiet. A lot of nature sounds. So welcome to the sauna. We make fire in, in this one. And when it's really hot inside here, you sit here and, and heat up. And then when you think it's uh, hot enough, you go out and then you take a dip in the lake.
we also do it in the winter time then we cut hole in the ice and put down the leather so you heat up a little bit more maybe and then go down and then quick down and bloop <laughs> Uh, but it's all it's very refreshing and, and relaxing it's very nice to use the sauna in Sweden is a quite big t tradition and is this floating yeah it is we have just tied it to um, but it's it's in the water it's in the water a floating sauna. Yeah, we don't have any showers, so many people use this instead of, of shower to heat up and then clean in the lake, and it's very refreshing. This lake is so clean and, and fresh. It's drinkable. It's more or less just spring water. So. When I have activities out in the forest, you feel so, sort of happiness. <laughs> and if you are out in the forest and, uh, and you have uh, long and hard exercises out in the woods, you get very, very tired and then you get happy just about some dry socks. <laughs> you, you really enjoy these small, small moments in your life. It's, it could be like nothing in, in a normal situation but sometimes you, you just think it's uh, this is the best sometimes you can actually see fishes here but like, like now it has been quite uh, cloudy and so on and now the sun is shining so just to stand here and maybe suck in the sun for a while it's that that kind of thing i i think it's important or just like this, a great view. When I do hiking in the forest, instead of just walking past this nice view, I just stop for 10 seconds and, oh, this is nice. And then, then I can continue. So I don't just rush everything. Just to come out, forget about daily life sometimes. Make it simple. It's important, I think. Just, uh, we will need some more water. But we don't need a lot of fire. All we're doing is cooking water and rice, right? That's a beginning. This is the outdoor kitchen we have. Fresh eggs, huh? Nice. We have some basic stuff that can be stored outside without the fridge. So you have oatmeal to do porridge, coffee. We have milk that can be outside, some bread and marmalades and so on. So it, I think it's also part of the experience to cook your own food over the fire. How do you soft boil it? You take it out earlier than the hard boil. Is it done? Well, how do you turn off the fire? You just have to put water over it now. Yeah. Almost. Okay, so who picked the blueberries for the old meal? Me! Me! Where did you find them? Oh, we found them next to our cabin. How do you know they are not poisonous? Because we ate them and they taste like the blueberries. And they have the same color? <laughs> right. You do cleaning in the stream, clean your face, brush your teeth. To try to, to use the nature in a good way. No way. See the light. See. I'm out quite often on these survival courses and we stay out under the stars. And when it's dark, it's so quiet. It's almost, yeah, people get a little bit afraid sometimes. It's too, too quiet. But it's a, I think it's luxury. It's, it's so nice to just be there. Let me show you what to do. What to run. Once upon a time, there was a quick. My grandma used to be fed and have bed sheets. 
and no candies and no stuff. Because these boys are like you. And no candies at all and no stuff and to never die. Uh, That's all. Nikki. Can you count the lights? <gasps> Good. Good night, everyone. When I'm out here, I feel so relaxed. Even if it's much work, you get so much energy in some way from the nature. Should we put on more fire? Yeah. So just to be out, fresh air and, and so on. And uh -oh. Daily life, I have three kids, it's so easy to just <laughs> rush, rush, rush through the days. Coffee? Sure, thank you. Maybe it's very strong. Tree. And then it's the next day, and then next day, and then, oh, there was one week, what I have done. I just run around and do cleaning and then shopping and uh, kids to kindergarten and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's important. Uh, for everyone just to come down and enjoy the small moments. Oh, good, I did that one well. Just to come out, make it simple, forget about daily life sometimes. It could be, it's important, I think. Out here, I think you learn to enjoy small stuff, like uh, if you're out in the forest, if it's raining, maybe you have been out, you're out uh, without food for maybe 24 hours. It's raining, it's quite uh, uh, hard sometimes. But then just the sun comes through and everything like, you, you just let go of everything. You just enjoy this small part. It's, I think that's important in life to take care of the. It's like carpe diem, I think you call it. Like, enjoy the time. I'll open it. But it blow away. Yeah? I don't think it'll blow away. Why? Because it's tied on. <laughs> <laughs>